Hey y'all, Moses here. Welcome to the fifth episode of PUBG Breakdown. Now we are going to be looking at my gameplay again today. Uh, I just wanted to kind of walk you guys through a couple of different end game scenarios and point out some things from a couple of the rounds I've had in the last few days on the stream over at twitch.tv slash WTF Moses. Now, um, again, we're going to be focusing primarily on the end game and top five situations and movement and positioning. That's kind of the topic for today, kind of the theme. I will have more uh, variety for these type of rounds coming in the future, but this is something that I've received requests on over the last couple of videos, so I figured I would cover it here. So as we jump right in, you can see that there are two people alive. One of them is me, uh, and uh, we're going to be watching how this particular uh, little end game plays out. I'll let you watch it uh, f from full speed at first, and then we'll jump in for the breakdown aspect. So might I be. I'm not careful. Don't be on my right. Oh, it's a 1v1. Ooh, okay. Well, I only have two kills. Gotta get the high ground. Okay, so here we are kind of halfway through that uh, last little push. So I've come from the bottom of the hill coming all the way to the top here because I wanted to kind of get on level ground with this guy. So he has a couple options. He is over here the last time I saw him. So he can kind of uh, push this way to this tree and he could maintain the control of this entire ridge if he came this way. So I wanted to get up here to make sure that I could try and cut that off. Now the most dangerous, the most dangerous aspect of that was traveling up the hill, but I saw him a couple of times, and even though he saw me, uh, he, he he basically fed me a lot of info as to where he was as I traveled up that hill. And uh, realistically, this would have this path right here would have been his best bet to cut me off, but I managed to do that before he did. So now, as you kind of jump and watch this kind of go ahead, I jump all the way over here to make sure that he again can't sneak down this ridge to this tree. And again, look back to where I came from to push shots on me with cover. So I've taken all that away from him. You can see here at the circle down here that I've essentially taken up all of this space, you know, coming from here over to here. And he can't have that now. I've covered all this space. I've cleared it out. I've made it safe in the, in the, in the instance that he can't, he can't really have moved anywhere without me seeing him. And because I haven't seen him, I have to assume he's still over here somewhere. So again... Uh, going back into the uh, into the video here, I make sure everything's cool. Run up the ridge, still looking to make sure he's not going to appear in some spot like over here, kind of looking for me. So again, he's only going to be one place. And with the circle closing, I've given him very little area to move in. He's going to be in this little kind of crescent spot without being able to move anywhere else. So I have almost a sure idea as to where he is. And uh, as you can see, as we jump back into the into the film here, he's got absolutely no, where I am, uh, no idea where I am and is looking back where he first saw me over there. So his line of sight is completely wrong. Um, and you know, this is just uh, a bit of tunnel vision, you know, only looking in the spot where you last saw an enemy rather than checking all the spots where they could come from. If you lose sight of an enemy uh, or continuity of their movement for more than 10 seconds, you have to assume that they're going to come from some some other spot and, and really increase your awareness and movement and vision. Um, and in this particular case, Ixnay on this 
particular gentleman here. Okay, so the scope's a little bit bigger in this particular example. There's seven alive, and I've got a little bit of work cut out for me. I'm kind of far out of the zone. The circle's about to start moving, and I've got a lot of open space in front of me where a lot of these players can be. Now, luckily, they start to engage each other, but I'll just kind of chat as this kind of goes through. So this example is more about decision-making in a group um, and kind of managing different aspects of a, of a multi multiplayer endgame situation that's you know pretty pretty destined to end in, in one specific way. Um, so let's just kind of watch it and I'll give you my thoughts afterwards as we break it down. Yeah, I can see him moving. He would have heard me now if he's over here still. Oh god. Yeah, he's over here. That's okay, I'm in here. Three. Houses. Get off him! Yeah. Should have saw me, but I saw him, so that's two. This guy's gonna push this gap. I can almost guarantee it. Either from my left or my right. That's the guy I gotta worry about. Let that guy let guy let that guy let that guy sweat the zone. Cause they both might be in the houses. Circle's moving. Other guys still in there? He's gotta be on my right then. Oh, he's right there. Ha! Ha -ha! Okay, so let's jump back a little bit and we'll start it uh, just at the end there. Um, I'll walk through a few things, uh, just kind of where we started. So here, so I, I take the guy out at the, uh, at the tree there and now I've got a lot of moving, moving to do as I get into the, uh, the final kind of circle or one of the second to last circles here, third to last rather. Okay, so the one thing I wanna be mindful of in this particular instance is the fact that these houses here um, are super dangerous and almost guaranteed to be occupied. So the one thing I don't want to do is have too much visibility onto wherever I'm standing by all of these windows. All of these windows could potentially have, well, uh, could potentially have a head or a car 98 looking at me. Uh, so I want to try to avoid those at all costs. So I, I take a quick look up here, um, but then I ultimately need to oh, kind of, you know, pick that at all. Get oh, away from that particular totally area because again, I just I just don't want to have visibility from the houses onto my position. So I use this low ground. I run straight. Again, I'm looking at these trees, making sure that there's no players peeking out or around. I did see one player come up this way from my previous engagement. So I'm in generally just you know fairly cautious mode, jumping around, looking around, making sure there's nobody waiting to ambush me. Now uh, this player that I, I thought I saw is actually at this tree right here but I, I still haven't actually seen him. So he ends up standing up, I take him out, and that's that. So I've also heard silent shots from this area. Um, you would have heard I, I'm kind of jumping He's around, reason. trying to invite shots. He does yeah. shoot at me, so that gives me the, uh, the audio it's information I need here. to easily locate him. Take him out, and suddenly 
there are only three remaining. So in this particular instance, again, I'm assuming that the houses are dangerous by with at least one player, potentially two, depending on the camping proficiency of the last two players. So with that in mind, I need to also be aware of people who were in spots I couldn't like it, look at because of the houses. So now that the circle has changed, this is the most likely path of any player who is looking to reposition for one of the last circles. So I've covered this in, a, in I think even the first video of, of PUBG Breakdown, that this kind of, this wedge here is a very common path for players to take. So as soon as I understand that that's what the last circle is gonna look like, I am just constantly scanning left and right to make sure that there are no players coming from this direction because that is where I would go if I were them. And I've already made that path once, I just happened to get the good circle, so I'm already here. So I need to defend it from anyone who might be approaching in that way, either coming out from the houses uh, or from a spot over here that I actually haven't seen yet. So again, watching it kind of play out, I'm checking the windows. I do eventually spot a player in this house right here. So I know that at least one player is here. Now, I, again, I have to assume that the other player is making the smart move and coming away from these houses or around to the gap to get away from the now uh, nearly nearly approaching circle. So I maintain my visibility and I, I just kind of continue from there. So I've seen him. I've established that there's, you know, he, he's just gonna leave. So I, I, I know I'm being squirrely here, but essentially what I've said is, let this guy sweat the zone because he's out, he has to move. I don't need to worry about this guy. I know that he's gonna wait too long. Uh, and if he doesn't, he's gonna have to come straight to me. So it doesn't really matter. I'll be able to take him out if he if he comes across unless I just lose the 1v1 fight. But in a, in, a, in a final three situation, the only thing you don't wanna do, or at least try to avoid where possible, is being the first guy to shoot in a, in a, in a 1v2 scenario or a 1v1 scenario. Um, because whoever gets that information for free, the guy who isn't shooting, it will be able to follow up and, and locate you relatively easily. Okay, so again, I've pressed all the way up. This is the best spot I can be in. Uh, I'm in the middle of the zone. I got, I've got vision to over here. I've got decent vision to over here. Most likely this guy wouldn't have, have waited this long to come this way if that's where he was going to come from. So I'm feeling fairly confident in how this is going to play out. So this is actually, you know, the way I've peaked this right here, I mean, I'm way too far away from the tree. I need to be, I need to lean this a little bit more rather than stepping out like this. So that's just one thing, but I've spotted this guy here um, who is very concerned about this guy in the house. So he must have been, you know, over here or close by. Uh, close enough to hear this guy moving around in the houses or has come out of here looking for this guy. Um, but I don't actually know that, you know, uh, but you know, I, I just have to take the shot that's, that's handed to me. So that's that. So there's one more thing I want to cover about this particular engagement, even though it was fairly straightforward. And that's what this guy is doing. So Again, we know what the play zone is currently, and I'm at the kind of bottom half of the newest play zone. If you are this guy, let's say you're you're worried about this, this dude in the house that you've been kind of stalking in the last little while. Regardless of what this guy is gonna do, you need to focus on everything else other than that guy, because I'm in the zone here, and I'm looking at you, looking at him. This player, has turned his back on the entire the entire new play zone. So he he knows there are three people left, but he has chosen to turn his back on the entirely new play zone, which uh, I could call it a fatal mistake, and that would be kind of underselling it. This is just a a, a bad move, just a just a bad move. Okay, so that guy's dead. Fairly easy because again, looking the wrong direction. Uh, I immediately take cover, make sure there's nobody going to peek me immediately. I reload my gun and uh, I kind of move on with my life uh, into what will appear to be a, an easy 1v1 because the circle's on the move. I haven't seen anybody else yet. And uh, I just have to assume that the remaining player is either right now leaving the house or is still in the house because, you know, even even if he's not, this this area right here 
is not in the play zone. And I've just seen the, la the third to last guy. So uh, this player, uh, I suppose, just chooses Other to escape in there? the house and run into the play zone, which is an interesting defense, um, but regardless, a very, very easy kill. So uh, I suppose the one kind of underlying lesson here is just recognizing positioning in the end game more so worrying about that last kill. Obviously killing the player is the idea and you wanna be in the best position to do so to increase your chances of winning those gunfights. So don't tunnel vision on players where you think they might be or the last place you heard them or saw them, but focus more on finding what the best position is supposed to be, or at least what you can identify that position to be. Uh, that will allow you to make a more uh, informed decision on how and when to take the fight, whatever fight it might be, the top three, top five, top 10, or even a 1v1. Because if your positioning is bad and you have left yourself no movement options, it really makes taking a gunfight much more stressful and difficult to execute properly. So hopefully that kind of gave you some uh, idea on, on that particular topic or some information on that topic. Um, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. This is a little bit different. I'm not, I didn't do a full round this time, but this is, this is a topic within these rounds I think is kind of interesting. Don't worry. You'll see more of this type of stuff in, in a full round perspective coming very, very soon. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of hit on this one thing that I think is really important and a really good skill, uh, or mentality to understand if you're looking to progress further into the end game and win more games. So, uh, again, leave a comment down below, uh, with any thoughts or feedback, like the video, if you liked it. And of course, subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Again, you can visit me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash WTF Moses and on Twitter at WTF Moses. And thank you guys for watching. And until next time, I will see you out there.